Influencers. Welcome to Influencers West. Influencers is a worldwide men's ministry with purpose. Men learning to become men of God no matter where they are called to worship. We are men from every nation and language and status who proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord of our lives. Call the Bible the final authority. Men of prayer, men of fellowship with other like-minded men, and share the good news with all. Welcome to our band of brothers. You may find us on the web at influencerswest.org. Morning, guys. Um, I want to recruit you. You're getting recruited for everything. I'm going to do my own recruiting here. Um, this evening, uh, we're going, uh, several of us in here are going up to Bakersfield this, today, actually, and to meet with uh, those guys up there. They're having their annual 24-hour retreat, and uh, they'll have um, seven, 800 guys there. Uh, they, it's, it's amazing what God does when these guys meet and get together and what they're doing all year long up there. They're just having almost a men's revival. And so tonight I'll have the privilege of sharing the gospel with those guys. And uh, tomorrow I'll be sharing the man of God message and they'll be putting wristbands on hundreds of guys. Uh, it'll be a great time. But I need you to pray. Nothing ever good happens. Nothing everlasting happens. No transformation really happens. No conversions really happen unless men are praying. Somebody's praying when somebody comes to Christ. And so if you think of it tonight and tomorrow morning and uh, over the next two days, just pray for the guys in Bakersfield. Pray for me and pray for the gospel as it goes forth tonight. We'd love to see a bunch of guys come to Christ. Um, on a different note, um, some of you have seen the movie that that it's kind of a deep theological movie. It's called Dumb and Dumber. It's a man's kind of movie. Um, and there's a scene in Dumb and Dumber. And Jim Carrey, uh, I'm not sure if he's dumb or he's dumber, but, you know, we won't split hairs over that. Um, but he was trying to get this gal to go out with him. Remember that scene, if you've seen the movie? And she wasn't having any of it. And she saw dumb when she knows dumb when she sees it. And so he just keeps badgering her and trying to get her to go out. And he says, "Were well, you going to go out with me?" She says, "Not. You don't have one chance in a million." You mean I have a chance? <laughs> <laughs> I like that attitude. <laughs> He's got a chance. You know, sometimes I feel the same way as a Christian. I don't know about you, but I think it's pretty common with us guys. We're wondering if we're ever going to get there. I remember Jerry Leachman looked at me one time and he says, you think we're going to be afraid all our lives? That's a good question. You think we're ever going to really believe God loves us? You think we're ever going to get a handle on grace and be able to receive grace? And God's grace. You think we'll ever get to the place where we can forgive ourselves for all the dumb mistakes and wrong choices and mess-ups that we make? You reckon we'll ever get there? You think I'm ever going to be a real man of God? I got the wristband on, but I wonder if I'll ever really be a man of God. A man after God's own heart. I wonder if my whole life I'm just going to be hitting and missing it, reading my Bible and having quiet times and trying to walk through the disciplines that I know I'm supposed to be doing, but I have a hard time with. I wonder if that's ever going to happen. We all struggle with that. It's two steps forward, one step back, or vice versa in the Christian life. It's the way it is. There's ups and there's downs. There's good times and bad. It's kind of like in that wedding vows, what you say. Uh, you know, God, I'm going to be faithful to you in good times and bad, in rich times and poor, in sickness and in health. And we have all of that. It seems like we have more sickness and bad times sometimes and good times and health. It seems like we have more poor than we have rich. And therein lies the challenge. But it's the challenge that's a victorious fight and battle. Oswald Chambers wrote a book. It was called The Fighting Chance. Uh, this morning I'm going to read some excerpts from that book. I mean, do we have a fighting chance here that we're going to be men of God, that all those things I just mentioned would actually happen, that we could attain those things this side of heaven? It's a fight. 
I looked up that chance word. Chance means the possibility that something may happen. I got a cartoon about a husband and a wife, and the guy's sitting there with a remote in his hand looking at the TV, and she's standing on the couch with a paintbrush writing, nothing ever happens on the wall. She had tried everything else, and now she's trying the paint on the wall thing. There's a, they, you've, you, we've talked about this before. There's three kinds of guys, if you want to put them in these categories. There's the guys that make things happen. There's the guys that watch things happen. There's the guys that say, what's happening? Yeah. And you and I have to decide which ones we are. We've got categories. We can say, well, which category am I? Am I making things happen for Christ? Am I just watching things happen? Watching things happen, guys, are what we call consumers. They don't give out much, whether it be in tithing or service. They just consume. Feed me, Leroy, feed me. And they're an abortion, really, to what Christianity really is. We're supposed to be the Sea of Galilee, where the, where the, where the sea flows in and it flows out and it just stays clean that way and clear because there's water coming in and water going out. But it gets down to the Dead Sea. Now, how many have ever floated in the Dead Sea? Okay, did you put your face in it? Nah, they, they warn you about that. You don't, want, you don't want to be doing that. That could ruin your whole day. But when you're floating in the Dead Sea, it's so thick and full of all kinds of minerals and salt and crud that you, you just lay there on top of it almost. And when you try to stand upright, it's so thick it's hard to even stand upright. And when you get out, the first thing you want to do is take a shower. <laughs> just, hey, we're men. We've got to say we did it. We've got to say we did it. That's the same reason I climbed, climbed up to what is that fort up there? Masada. Yeah, I, I, I did it. I ain't doing it again, but I did it. I was in the Army. I, I, I learned a lot. I'm kind of glad I went through the basic training and all that stuff, but I don't want to do it again. Moving right along. Here's a, back to chance. The possibility that something may happen and be realized by a great struggle or fight. That's something that's going to happen. It's going to take a fight to get there. You're going to have to win this battle. Every time, even coming here this morning, I've talked to several of you guys already. It was a battle just getting here this morning. It's a battle to put yourself in a right place, to put yourself in a place of blessing. And when you put yourself in a place of blessing, what does God do? He blesses. Hang around the right guys. Put yourself in the right environments. Run from the wrong environments and the wrong guys and the wrong people and the wrong friends. Run from temptation. That's what Joseph did. And he's a pretty stalwart guy. I think he is high in all of our estimation. And when he was tempted by Potiphar's wife, he ran right out of his coat. We need to remember Joseph. Next time you try to start to hit that button on the computer... You know what button I'm talking about. Romans 8, 35 through 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Do we have a fighting chance here? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? He, that's a pretty good list. Is any of this stuff? And these things are serious business. Serious means that there's a possibility that something really bad or dangerous could happen. This serious stuff, show trouble or hardship. Some of you guys are in trouble and going through hardship. Is that separating you from the love of Christ? Famine or nakedness, some of you are wondering where the next meal is going to come from. And Joseph stands up here and says, we're, we're trying to help those guys who are wondering where the next meal are coming from. That's being the Sea of Galilee. We've been fed, we want to go feed others, literally in this case. Danger, sword. As it's written, for your sake, we, we fa face death all day long. You know, we have some Christian brothers and sisters and their children that are facing this right now as we speak in the Middle East. Piles of children with their heads cut off. Guys, we have a fierce enemy. 
He's relentless. He's merciless. He won't give up. He has feels no remorse. You can't negotiate with him. You can't compromise with him. He's a liar and he's a deceiver and he's bloodthirsty. He's the same enemy here as he is over there. He just has different tactics so far. But that same spirit's right here. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Okay, now, do we have a fighting chance to ever get to that place where we're more than conquerors? Where you can slap me on one cheek and I don't have to feel the room full of uppercuts. I don't have to get mad at you. I'm not, I'm not offended. I can just turn the other cheek. That's more than a conqueror. You conquer that inner man. You conquer that man that has to take up for himself, vindicate himself, fight for himself, defend himself. See, there's so many situations where the unexpected response, the unexpected life, being the salt of the earth and the light on a hill is just turning the other cheek and being more than a conqueror. They're forcing you to go one mile. This is not fair. This is not just. I shouldn't have to do this, but I have to. The government, the IRS, my boss, my wife says I have to. I saw a T-shirt yesterday. It says, my wife says I can be boss today. Believe me, you're never going to be boss if she doesn't say it's okay. You're never going to be a leader if somebody's not following you. Moving right along. I'm convinced. Guys, we, is there a chance? Do we have a fighting chance of ever getting to a place where you say, I'm convinced. I know. I'm not wondering. I'm not doubting. I'm not hoping. I'm not wishing. I know. Category number four, and guys that hear the gospel, they know that they know that they know they're saved. The Holy Spirit's born witness in their heart. They know they're forgiven. They know they're different. They're transformed. They're a new creature, a new man. They have a new man code. They have a new DNA. They have a new purpose for living, a new vision for what world all. They understand now. They get it. We got a fighting chance of ever getting there. We've got a fighting chance of not mumbling and grumbling and complaining when hardship and trials and difficulty comes our way. That the first thing we do is say, praise the Lord. What are you trying to teach me, Lord, through this trial? What fruit of your spirit are you trying to build into my life through this hardship, through this irritable person, through this difficult circumstance? Instead of seeing the circumstance and hating it and all those who created it and contacting your lawyer, just saying to God, God, what character trait of yours are you trying to do here what can I do to respond to this person in a way that would make them hungry for you well he said here's how you do that turn the other cheek go the second mile and bless those who persecute you hmm. pray for your enemies more than a conqueror I'm convinced that neither death or life, neither angels or demons, neither present nor future, nor any powers. I'm convinced. None of that. And it's all out there, but none of that. Well, neither height nor depth, even that, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus our Lord. Is that an amen? That is an amen. Amen. You're fighting apathy, guys. That's what we fight. We fight being entangled with the world. We fight by letting the world get the better of us. We plan by the world's rules and it gets the better of us. You can't beat the world, you can't beat the flesh, and you can't beat the devil. All three of those are way too much for me. I'm thinking that maybe they are for you. You're not going to beat those guys. You're not going to come out on top fighting those guys. You don't have it. I'm telling you right now, God didn't create you to be able to beat the world. He said, don't be squeezed into the world's mold. Don't let the world squeeze you into the mold. Don't let them do that. You have control over that. That's what it tells me. I don't have to let the world squeeze me. I don't have to become like the world. 
I don't have to let the world impact me more than I'm impacting the world. But you're going to have to get a fight to see that happen. You're going to have to win a struggle. It's a struggle of ego. It's a struggle of pride. It's a struggle of lust. It's always a struggle. I'm crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. Christ in me, the hope of glory. During the French Revolution, little boys, this is some uh, excerpts from Chambers' book. During the French Revolution, little boys who could hardly walk carried banners around with these words printed on them. Tremble, tyrants, we are growing. Ooh, that's, that'd be a pretty good t-shirt. Tremble, tyrants. We are growing. I think of, it makes me think of um, Isaiah, is it Ezekiel 67, where he says, God took me out to this valley of dry bones. 37, 36. I'm getting old. I'll be 70 soon. <laughs> I blame it on that. Anyway, wherever it is, it's a valley of dry bones. I know that much. He says, son of man, can these dry bones live? The first time I read that, several years ago, I just saw men in the, in the it's just a men's ministry verse, chapter. Because when you look at men, you just see a whole valley full of dry bones. They don't seem to have any life in them. They don't seem to be an initiative, initiating anything. They seem to be kind of sitting there for the most part. Dead sea, dry bones. I love the question, can these dry bones live? Is there a fighting chance he would get these bones up? Now, Ezekiel's sitting there and he's gone. I don't think so. Uh, yes, Lord, they can live if you say so. Basically was his answer. And God said so. He's so good. Now I want you to prophesy to these bones. And the, and the bones start coming together. He heard this rattling sound. That's what we'll hear up in Bakersfield. I'm telling you, when you go to Bakersfield, you hear this rattling sound of, of these bones coming together. We do here, I think, right here in this room, we hear rattling sounds of these bones coming together. And they came together, and there's a skeleton standing up there. And he says, you know what? They don't have any meat and muscle and flesh. So the meat and muscle and the flesh and all that start coming on. And he says, you know, we still got a problem. They're not breathing. Breathe life into them. And he breathed life into them. And it says, they came together like a mighty army. And I said, God, that's my prayer. That's my prayer for me. That's my prayer for this group. That's my prayer for men's groups everywhere. That we would come together like a mighty army. That God would breathe life into us. Is there a fighting chance? We got a fighting chance at that one. We got a fighting chance that we could fill up our prayer rooms with praying men. Is there a fighting chance at that? We've been after it 22 years. We're still fighting for it. Is there a chance? Well, as long as you have Jesus Christ, you got a fighting chance. You can not only have a fighting chance, you can be more than a conqueror through Him. See, He never meant for us to be carried to heaven on a flowery bed of roses. Don't be surprised when you encounter various difficulties and trials. We're given the fighting chance. It's a glorious fight. He came to make... Now, I love this, okay? If any man's in Christ, he's a new creature. He came to make the lame, the outcast, the blind, the lepers, the lazy, the apathetic, and all but sin damned into terrors to the prince of this world. Is there a fighting chance you and I could become terrors to the prince of this world, to the devil? I mean, terrorists to the point where you come, he leaves. See, that's what happens when the Holy Spirit comes into the presence of the devil and the demons. It's when Jesus came into the presence of legion and he had buku 
demons in him. And that scared them to death because Jesus was there now. They knew who Jesus was. A lot of guys, they say Jesus isn't Lord. They say God isn't God. These demons knew different. And they were scared spitless and they said, look, just put us in those sheep, I mean pigs over there. And he did. Pigs ran off the cliff into the ocean. <laughs> You're full of it, aren't you? <laughs> That's good, though. I like that. Is there one thing the unsaved man is incapable of doing? And if there is... It's fighting against the awful powers of sin. See, the unsaved man, I don't know about you, but that was my testimony. I came to Christ because I couldn't whip sin. I didn't, know, I didn't know where to go with it. I didn't know how to stop it. I didn't know how to get rid of it. I was tired of it. I got so tired I was desperate. I was so desperate that I prayed a prayer and said, God, I can't be the man you want me to be. I'm a total failure. But I want to be the man you want me to be. I know I'm not the man you created me to be, but... Would you make me that man? That was my sinner's prayer. What's your sinner's prayer? Were you desperate enough? Tonight I'm going to share the gospel with these men up there, and I'm going to share four categories that I've shared with you many times. But you couldn't tell me right now, so I'll review them for you. I know you. I got you. I got your number. First category, you reject the gospel for whatever reason. You got blinders on. And you ain't taking those blinders off. You like having those blinders on. You can, you can shoot holes all in the gospel, all in the church, all in the Christians, and all the hypocrites, and the Bible. The first category is men hear the gospel, they reject it. Second category are men who prayed a prayer. They did whatever was going on. If you want to receive Christ, pray this prayer. They prayed the prayer, but there was never a life exchange. They got baptized, but there was never a life exchange. They never received anything from God. They didn't receive God's forgiveness. They didn't they never repented. They weren't broken, and they have no assurance of their salvation. They're still trying, though, and they don't know what's wrong, a lot of these guys. That was me. They don't know what's missing. They've done everything the church said. They've gone by the rules. But they still hadn't gotten there, and they know it. They're still wishing and hoping that they're saved. The third category, Jesus says, many will come to me on that day. Not all who say to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Many will come to me and they'll say, Lord, we prophesied in your name. We cast out demons. We did many miracles in your name. There's those people that think they're saved. They're not. They're going down their list of works, their list of things they've performed, things they've done to earn righteousness, to earn salvation. And he says, I never knew you. It's all about your own righteousness. And you can't get into heaven in your own righteousness. You need the white robes of righteousness of Jesus Christ. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but through me. And Jesus says, you know, there's a big banquet going on in heaven. And this guy gets in. He doesn't have the white robes of righteousness. How would you get in here? You're out. Why? Because you didn't believe in Jesus Christ. You didn't put your faith in him. And you'll never be more than a conqueror. You have no fighting chance apart from him. Paul warns our fight is not against flesh and blood, but against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. No man is a match for that warfare unless he's saved by God's grace. If we're fighting heavenly hosts... If we're, if we're not fighting flesh and blood, spiritual hosts of wickedness, demons, bloodthirsty, merciless demons. He said, no, man, no man's a match for that warfare unless he's saved by God's grace. Unless he's crucified and Christ is living in him. Then he's more than a conqueror. Then the demons flee when he walks in the room because he's walking in the spirit of God. A man has to put on the armor of God to fight this fight when he's had the selfish disposition kicked out of him. 
See, you're not going to put on the armor. It's not going to fit if you had not had the selfish disposition kicked out of you. The helmet of salvation, you can't get that on. As long as you've got that self-pride, I'm still working, I'm still trying to achieve, I'm still trying to impress God and others. And what a good Christian, what a good man I am. There's a lot of really good men, good women. There's a lot of good people that are going to end up in hell because they were good. That was good enough for them. But they never really got saved. They were never broken. They were never truly forgiven. And all we do, all we can do is warn, 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 warn. That's what God did for us. He warned us. In this world, you're going to have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Take heart. I have overcome the world. In this world, you're going to have tribulation. Consider yourself warned. I'm glad he didn't stop right there. I'm glad he said, but take heart. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. You haven't. You can't. You won't apart from me. If you abide in me and my word abides in you, you'll bear much fruit. For apart from me, you can't overcome the world. You can't overcome the flesh. You can't overcome the devil. You're going to get the ever-loving stew kicked out of you. And that's a good thing because that drives men to Christ. Oh, it makes more, some men more hard-hearted and hard-headed, but... A lot of guys come to Christ, and that's the only way they come. It's a fight. It's a struggle. It's getting beat up. It's letting the world just beat you up. You bought in. You went that way. You got beat up. You depended on the flesh as if the flesh could get you through it. You had a depression and nervous breakdown, discouraged. And then you thought you could take on the devil, but you can't. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, for they are not in the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. You know, when Jesus sits at the right hand of God, what's he praying? He's praying that you and I would be protected from the evil one. And now, can I just tell you that you've been protected from the evil one so much that you'll never know? You'll never know how much you've been protected because of Jesus' prayers for you and me from the evil one. Because the evil one, what we're seeing right now in our world, not just in our country, not just in our neighborhood, not just in our families, what we're seeing in the world is as God begins to take his hand away, not because he wants to, but because we told him to get his hands off us. We shook our fists in his face, and we don't want this God ruling over us. And so sooner or later, he just takes his hand off. But, you know, as his hands move in this way, the demons are coming this way. And what we're seeing is the demons are being cut loose. Is there more drug addiction? Is there more broken lives? Is there more suicide? More teenagers killing themselves? More abortions? Is more immorality? More perversion? more crime, and I mean remorseless crime. I mean the crime of demons, when they kill you, they feel good about it. They're bloodthirsty. Remember the spirit of ISIS? It's right here, too, taking babies' lives right out of the womb. I mean, they're cutting their heads off over here. We're just killing them in the womb over in, in this neighborhood. And we have a fight. We can never forget we're in a fight. You take your eyes off the battle and you become a casualty. You don't engage in the fight and you just say, I'm just sit over here and watch the fight happen. Then it'll come to you and you won't be ready. It'll come to you. You'll still, you can't avoid this fight. It'll have its way with you or you're going to be more than a conqueror and have your way with him and with it. You're going to be a terror to the devil. Or he's going to have his way with you. You're going to be filled with the Spirit of God and walk in and the demons flee or not. You can't have one foot in the world and one foot following Jesus Christ. It does not work. We just need to be reminded of that on a regular basis. Amen? It's my job. Jesus predicted or warned that we were in a fight. It's a glorious fight. And so, guys, is there a fighting chance we could get there? 
There's a fighting chance that guys just like me and you could be more than conquerors. I believe there is. I'm looking at you right now, and I know that's what you want. You wouldn't be here. If you didn't want that, you wouldn't be here. And some of you are that right now. I know you are. I know you. You're more than a conqueror. And when these trials and these difficulties come, they don't knock you down. You just remember who you are, and you remember who's in charge, and you remember where your strength comes from, and your hope comes from. You know where your life comes from. And the devil can't have his way with you. He comes at you with hardship, and you come back with him with hope and praise. You come back with him with prayer and praying for your enemies. If he can knock you down, he'll knock you down, and he'll stay on top of you and put his foot on the back of your neck. But if you won't let him knock you down, if you stand your ground, stand firm in the faith. Be on your guard. Act like men. Be strong. Do it every, all in love. Don't get this Rambo thing going on for Christ. Do it in love. Don't do it for revenge. Don't do it to get even. Don't do it to look good. Don't do it to prove something. Do it because that's what Jesus Christ does in and through a man when he's filled with his spirit. Stand your ground. Look him in the eye. Don't look away. He'll look away. When you're filled with God's Spirit and Jesus Christ is living in you, He'll look away. You don't have to be afraid. We got more than a fighting chance, guys, in Jesus Christ. Apart from Him, we have no chance. So let's make sure every day that we're fighting the good fight. Let's make sure today that we're confessing sin, that we're looking the devil in the eye and we're trusting in Jesus Christ to make us more than conquerors, to overcome the world. Let him who hears and has ears to hear and eyes to see, let him be an overcomer. I got a list of things that God's going to do for overcomers. He's going to let the overcomers sit on the throne with him. He's going to give overcomers new life. He's going to let the overcomers eat from the tree of life in paradise. Overcome, endure, persevere, stand your faith, hold your ground. It'll all be over soon. We'll be worshiping around a throne, but let's take a bunch of them with us. Let's take our share, our quota. I don't know what my quota is, but I want to make sure that I meet it. And take as many with me as I possibly can. Amen? Amen. Let's stack hands on that, guys. Father, that's what we're doing. We're just stacking hands. We have more than a fighting chance with you. And Father, we are coming to you and then praising you right now that we're men that can take heart. We're men that can be of good cheer because you have overcome the world. And Lord, we just pray right now that we'd be overcomers. We pray right now that we'd be more than conquerors in Christ. That we don't have to be afraid. We can stand our ground. There's nothing that anybody or any of these things can do to separate us from your love. We're secure in that. I pray if there's any man here that's not secure in that, that right now he would receive that and become secure in Christ. Father, John the Baptist says we must decrease, you must increase. That's our prayer. We want to decrease. We want to be crucified with Christ. We want to be humble and broken and stand up and hold our ground in Christ. Only you can do this in our hearts. That's why we turn to you. That's why we're praying. And God, I believe with all my heart you're going to do that with these men. Blessings on them. Bless them as they go out the door. Bless them as they go to their home and their businesses. The highways and the byways, Lord, make them lights and salt. Make them servants of the Most High God. Men of God for such a time as this will give you the credit and the glory. And all God's men said, Amen. Give them heaven.